you have fasted and you don't have strength to stand up on it. Praise the Lord. And you think God is happy looking, seeing you looking like an old man. Actually, true fasting makes you look younger. It refreshes you. You know why? I told you that true fasting is a honeymoon with God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. True fasting is what? Hallelujah. Try it. You'll be shocked. What is honeymoon? When newly married people go on honeymoon, what do they do? Do they carry family members? Uh -huh. Do they put their phone on? No, they shut everything down. What do they do? They want to have fellowship with one another. Fellowship. Have you ever seen anybody that went on honeymoon and was fasting? Have you seen any? Shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, try celebration. Try celebrating God. Praise the Lord. You can do one man celebration. Six o'clock. Put praise and worship in your room. Lock it up. Lock it up. What do you do? Rejoice in the presence of the Lord. And I say to you again, what? Rejoice. Think about the goodness of the Lord. Just begin to magnify his name. Make it as loud as possible. Are you hearing me? Make it as, you know, you know, one of our neighbors in Munich, he used to stay upstairs before he moved out. He said to me once, he said, he said, you know, the church, because we are downstairs, he's upstairs. He said, the church makes a lot of noise. He said, but it's a good noise. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That was the same man that came here. He said, but it's a good noise. He said, it's a good noise. I like it. I said, but we were thinking that we disturb. He said, no, 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 don't talk about disturbing me. It's a good noise. So there is a good noise. There is a bad noise. The problem with you, you make a bad noise. All my enemies, fire, torta, fire, torta. All my enemies, water, carry them, flood, carry them. This one happened to them. <laughs> Thank you, hot water. I take AK-47 and I shoot them. Do, 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 do. Oh, man. And your neighbors are listening to all those things. They will hate you. They will hate you the more. Praise the Lord. The Connors Marion told me, said, uh, he said, uh, one of her neighbors, if I remember correctly what she said, said to her, um, I like the noise you people make, oh. you know, because of the micro church. He said, I like it. I like the music. I like the praise that comes from there. Are you hearing me? I like the praise that comes from that place. And that was a neighbor speaking to her. Amen. The reason why they don't like your noise is because always you are cursing. Try praying, Lord, bless my neighbors. Bless the one on the left. Bless the one on the right. Bless the children. Bless the works of their hand. Bless their going out and their coming in. Lord, give them a testimony. Lord, make them a testimony. No sickness, no disease shall befall any of them. Try that prayer. No, try blessing and not cursing. Are you hearing me? Try fellowship in prayer and not fighting in prayer. How come that all the prayer you know is about fighting? I am in your presence, Lord. Bless me now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord Jehovah. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless me now, we are in your presence, Jehovah. Bless me now, we are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now, we are in your presence, Jehovah. Bless us now, we are in your presence, Lord. 
We are in your presence, Jehovah. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Jehovah, bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Jehovah, bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Jehovah, bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Mighty Redeemer, bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Messiah, bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. Oh, we are in your presence now. Jehovah, bless us now. We are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now, oh, we are in your presence, Lord. Jehovah, bless us now, we are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now, oh, we are in your presence, Lord. Jehovah, bless us now, we are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now, oh, we are in your presence, Lord. Jehovah, bless us now, we are in your presence, Lord. Bless us now. Shout hallelujah. You are blessed. You are blessed. And you are blessed in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name please take your seat for the just next 10 15 minutes you know when that spirit of praise and worship comes just unleash it amen just go ahead amen because it's so wonderful to praise the Lord are you hearing me? It's so wonderful to praise him. Because you can't go wrong with praise. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now for the next 10-15 minutes by the grace of God, we're just going to talk about this great salvation that we have. Amen. You know, in this month, I said we talk about two subjects simultaneously. The newness of the New Testament on Sundays and this great salvation on Wednesdays. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we don't appreciate what salvation is. But sometimes we don't seem to understand what salvation implies. Amen. But Jesus said to them in Luke chapter 10 verse 23 Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Verse 24, Luke chapter 10. He said, for I tell you that many prophets and kings, <laughs> many prophets and kings, they wanted to see what you see, but did not see it. And they wanted to hear what we are hearing, but they did not hear it. Praise the Lord. Many prophets, many kings, they wanted now, Jesus is telling us how valuable 
our salvation is. And it should be. Many wanted, many called of God, prophets, kings. They wanted to hear it. They wanted to see it. The power of salvation. They couldn't. Praise the Lord. Like Peter said in First Peter chapter 1, he says, verse 10. He said, concerning this salvation. What salvation is he talking about? He said, concerning what? This salvation. The salvation that both of us we have. He said, the prophets. They spoke of the grace that was to come to you. Searched intently. And with the greatest care. Verse 11. They were trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Christ in them was pointing. When he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that will follow. Praise the Lord. Verse 12. Peter said it was revealed to them. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. When they spoke of the things that have not been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things, but they could not. This salvation. Even angels, they long to look into these things. Why? Why? That this salvation, this salvation is so beautiful. It's so powerful. Praise the Lord. And yet our generation don't seem to appreciate it. What is it that they know about this salvation that we don't know? What is it that they understand about this salvation that we don't understand? What is it that was revealed to them about salvation that we are commonizing it? Jesus said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, they will cast out demons. Praise the Lord. In my name, in my name, they will cast out devils. In my name, they will speak with new kind of tongues. Praise the Lord. And sometimes, sometimes we just think that speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues is just about the spirit-inspired tongues. No, and I've told you here, hey, there are tongues of men and tongues of Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. When you are born again, your tongue changes. You don't speak like the way you used to speak. You speak differently. Amen? You speak what? Sweet things. Corrupt communication does not come out of your mouth anymore. Let no corrupt communication Proceed out of your mouth. When you are born again, when you are spirit filled, you don't speak. You don't speak like the world. Every time you speak, somebody gets blessed. Every time you speak, somebody is inspired. Are you hearing me? Look, just Proverbs 16. I want to show us something. I want to show you the power of the gospel in your tongues, in your lips. The power of the gospel in your lips. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 21. Proverbs. Today I will need a timekeeper to tell me, Pastor, it's time. After keeping the time, I will see you after service. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Proverbs 16 verse 21. He says, the wise in heart will be called what? prudent. But I want you to read the second thing that follows. And sweetness. Ah. He says, and sweetness of the lips increases learning. He said what? The sweetness of the lips. The sweetness of your tongue. The sweetness of your mouth. The Bible said it increases learning. This is the new tongue Jesus is talking about. When we are filled with the Holy Ghost and with power, our, our lips, 
becomes sweet. When we speak about the gospel, people want to hear because we, we bring it with certain measure of sweetness. Certain measure of grace. He says, hey, hey. <laughs> and sweetness of the lips increases learning. What a gospel. What a gospel. I bring you good news today. And somebody said, please continue speaking. The problem is that many of us, our tongues have not changed since we got born again. Are you hearing me? They spoke in another tongue as the spirit gave them unction. They spoke. You shout. You yell. When you want to speak. When you want to correct. And so you are manner. Even though you are saying the right thing, but you say it the wrong way. And so, instead of you increasing learning, you frighten people from learning. No, read the scriptures and be transformed. The sweet lips. Sweet lips. The Bible says it increases learning. It makes people to listen to you. And that is why when we go for evangelism, we don't start from condemnation. Are you hearing me? That is why in the family, when you want people to be attracted to the gospel, even in certain difficult challenges, you keep calm because you are sweet lips. You are sweet lips will draw them close to you. Praise the Lord. Do not love the world or the things in the world. But because of the things in the world, you will poison your tongue, poison your lips. Anybody that took my thing, God will judge them. They only took your thing and you are cursing them eternally. You are cursing them eternally. They took your belt and you are calling down fire on them. Are you okay? The greatness of salvation The greatness, the sweetness of our salvation. Many of you don't know how to even attract little children. Little children. You said that you are very disciplined. You are very, it comes to children, you are very disciplined. When it comes to your life, you are lawless. Look at the hypocrisy. No, look at the hypocrisy. God is pampering you. If God should judge you by your standard, you won't be alive. You say, I don't like it when children run around. Hey, do you know the running around you've been doing with God? Do you know the running around you've been doing with God? And so you can't even reach out to children to bless them. You are like the disciples. When the children came, they say, hey, stop them. They should not come to the master. The Bible says, Jesus was angry. He said, let the children come to me and forbid them not. Do you know the test of the grace upon your life is how children come close to you? Or you don't know? Oh, better go and learn it. The test of grace upon your life is how children run to you. But you don't know it. You should learn it. You should do what? Learn it. When you correct, you correct in a loving way. When you speak, you speak in a very gracious way. Sweetness. Sweetness of the lips increases learning, isn't it? Verse 24, the same place. He says, pleasant words are what? Are like a honeycomb. Ah, Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Did he say pleasant prayers? No. Did he say pleasant prayers? Did he say <laughs> pleasant fasting? What did he say? Pleasant words are like what? A honeycomb. He said the sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. So, in your tongue, in your mouth, 
is either honeycomb or sour grape. Many of you, your mouth is sour. They say, don't, don't let me open my mouth. If I open my mouth, you will not like it. Already we know. Praise the Lord. Already we know. Look at it. Sweetness to the soul and health. And health. Sweetness what? To the soul. And what? And health to the bones. It is not prayer of faith. This is talking about who? What is he talking about? Pleasant words. Pleasant words. Pleasant words. Pleasant words. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I always say to people, shouting does not achieve more results. <laughs> First, after shouting, you go inside and you are tired. And secondly, you are convicted. Now, you just finished out in five minutes, you are repenting. Does that make sense? I told you I don't have common sense. Amen? I don't have common sense. What do I have? Spiritual sense. What is about this gospel that Jesus said, prophet, kings, the desire to hear, to see, it, they could not. Peter said, beyond prophets and kings, Peter said, even angels could not see into it. What is in this salvation? Only in Romans chapter 1, you can find that. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, before we close. By the way, is the weather good for evangelism? Sorry? The weather is good. Praise the Lord. Romans 1, verse 16. Ah, you will like this. Oh. Now you will understand why the prophets, the kings were not allowed. The angels were not allowed. But by revelation, Paul said, it is given to me by revelation. By what? Revelation. Are we there? Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. The same gospel. The same gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of it. Actually, I am proud of the gospel. I am confident about it. That's why he said, I am persuaded. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, I am what? Persuaded. Abraham, contrary to all contrariness, still believed in hope. Even when the situation was faithless, he refused to be faithless. Are you hearing me? You know why? Faith that is in the word of God will never slack. What Abraham had was the word. And so he never slacked. And all that God is trying to get us into is into the word. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. He said first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. Verse 17. Ah, oh, I pray that you remember this. I pray that you will embrace this. I pray that these will enter into your spirit. Everybody read verse 17. Ah. Ah. He says, for in it, in what? No, no, no. For in it, in what now? In the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel, right? He said, for in it, in what? In the gospel. In the gospel. In the word. Paul said, in the word. He says, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. 
The just shall live by faith. Hmm. For in the gospel, verse 17, NIV, for in the gospel, say the gospel, say the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Shout hallelujah. In it, the word of God is revealed. In it, the word of divine health is revealed. In it, the word of prosperity is revealed. In it, the better life is in it. And so the devil will swear that you will never look into it. And so the day you set up for praying and fasting, that's when your friend will show up. He will bring rice and beans and assorted meat for you. You say, but, but, but. He said, you know, I just remembered you today. I wanted to fast, <laughs> but you can fast tomorrow. Let's eat, bro. It's actually that's true. There will always be food tomorrow. There will always be fast time tomorrow to fast. They've knocked off your appointment with Jehovah with what? Stew, like Jacob and Esau. Even the, before the guy will finish, you already carry the thing and open. I'm saying, hmm, hmm, hmm. Ah, where's my spoon? The guy is now watching you. He came to tempt you, now you are tempting him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I told you, anything to make you not to read the Bible, the devil will give it to you. Have you noticed when you can't sleep, you carry the Bible? You open John chapter 1. Are you hearing me? The devil said, ah, I thought you were going to watch film, Nollywood. And now you carry the Bible. John chapter 1, verse 1, you've not finished it. The Bible became your eye cover. To, you know, just, just cover your eyes and you went to sleep. And the sleep will come so nice. Devil will do anything to make sure you don't. Because in it, in this, better life is in it. Divine health is in it. Prosperity is in it. So to keep you in poverty, he will give you bread for today, not to open this hole. <laughs> Thank you. He will bribe you not to open this thing. Praise the Lord. To so pray and fast. Devil has no problem with you to pray and fast, provided you don't pray with this. <laughs> because he knows affliction upon affliction. Why are you fasting? Rent money. <laughs> the devil said, rent money will not come. Let him suffer also. <laughs> are you hearing me? You are fasting. You know that you have food to break after. And so you afflict your soul the more. My father. My God. <laughs> ah, you've not seen the prayer of those that fast and have taken away their strength. <laughs> My God. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says when you are fasting, anoint yourself. Look good, dress good, talk good. Are you hearing me? Hey. When you are fasting, that's the best time. You know that song I just sang? I am in your presence now. It's actually a time that you are in fasting. No, you don't get it. It's not just when you come to church. Oh. That song is when you are in that honeymoon with God. I say, Lord, I'm in your presence. I don't want to live here the same. When I come out, let it be obvious. If you go to Asso Rock and come back, won't people know? No, won't people know? Even the servant they used to serve you, you would steal it and put it in your pocket. No, let's be honest. Is it not true? <laughs> oh, let's not say you did still. You will take it. You will wipe your mouth three times. What are you doing? You are pocketing servant. And the first person you see, I just came from Master Rock. He said, what did you go to do? He said, ah, I, went, <laughs> I went for dinner. I see, see servant. <laughs> if you don't have anything to show, you show them what? Servant. 
if it's possible for you to steal the cutlery, then you will take it. Prophetess is printing Asso Rock cutlery. You will take it. When you come back, will you eat with it? No, now you will frame it. <laughs> Are you hearing me? How much more when you are in the presence of Jehovah? Why should you come out the same? The Bible said that Moses was in his presence. Forty days after coming down, Moses was transformed. His body began to shine like the body of God. The glory has rubbed up on him. Are you hearing me? The glory has what? He has, he has become a partaker of what is given to us freely in the New Testament. He came out. Moses didn't even know that he has changed. But those around knew. Are you hearing me? Uh, tell your neighbor this gospel is good. Be proud of it. Reach out to it. Read into it. And your life will never be the same again. Stand on your feet, everybody, and shout hallelujah. And shout hallelujah. Say, I am not ashamed. This gospel is my life. It's my health. It's my prosperity. I will embrace it. I believe it. I live it. I will enjoy it. All the days of my life. Just wave your Bible, lift up your Bible and make the devil angry. Just wave your Bible and say, this word of God is my life. This word of God is my life. I believe it. I will live it. I will showcase it. All the days of my life. Shout hallelujah somebody. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. Just imagine the joy of talking about the gospel. Imagine what it will do now when you apply it. Amen. Imagine the joy of application. Shout hallelujah. You know, when you get excited with this thing, this thing makes you feel high. Yo. I'm telling you, those that need cigarettes and alcohol and cocaine to be high, they are missing it. If you really want to get high, smoke this new man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you want to get high, do what? Smoke this. Smoke it. Sniff it. How do you sniff it? And the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hey! Where is the devil? The devil said, We are not around. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the, devil said, the devil will leave you outside you. We are not around. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, we went on holidays. <laughs> realizing that, you, you know, you know, I, I heard about the man of God that they went to have crusade in Calabar. On the day of the program, they couldn't locate the venue. One rascal called Olumba Olumba book, the, 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 confused man of God with his magic. They couldn't find their venue for the program. Are you hearing me? True story in this country. And when Archbishop had it, he said, what? In this country? He said, tell him I'm coming. Tell him I'm what? I'm coming. And Archbishop flew in and went there. When the man had Archbishop, he ran away. He said, power, pass power. power, pass power. He ran away. He ran away. Praise the Lord. When they were doing the foundation, the ceremony of... Uh, Best in the whole university. Are you hearing me? People say that they will not take money from such people because if they take money, the man came also with a delegate. The man, the same man, oh, 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 came bringing money and all that. They told our bishop, he said, bring it. He said, the weight of the Gentiles is mine. Put it here. Say, power, pass power. Power, pass power. It's because you are still dealing with the coins of salvation. You've not gotten to deal with the paper note. You know why? You are still at the level where you are offering is five naira, ten naira. The day you will cross border to ten, one thousand as an offering, you will know power past power. Are you hearing me? A man told Papa Adeboye, redeem. He said, a prophet, 
told him about how many years ago. He said, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. He said, and all that the prophet told him has come to pass. He said, the prophet also told him at the age of 80 that he would die. He said, Baba, I'm about to be 80. So I've come to tell you I will soon die. By now he has moved into redeem camp. He said, all the prophet said has come to pass. So the, the last one he said is at the age of 80 that he would die. So he just came to inform him. Papa Debra said, you are not going to die. He said, but you don't understand. Everything that prophet said has come to pass. You remain this one. Baba said, power pass power. 80, you will not die. I say, you will not die. The guy said, if you say so, <laughs> if you what? Mary said, be it unto me according to the word. Are you hearing me? The man, 80, he didn't die. 81, he didn't die. 82, he didn't die. 83, he didn't die. And when Baba was sharing this, the man was 89, he still didn't die. Say, power pass power. power. 